Thanks for tuning in to the Animal Control Report podcast, where we help debunk the dog catcher stereotype. A lot of times people think it's the dog catcher when they hear about animal control officers. But here on the Animal Control Report, we change that by taking you inside the day-to-day operations of animal control officers. Not only will you hear stories of animal control officers, but you'll hear from industry experts as well. We are also part of the Keep It Humane podcast network. We have some amazing partners there, so check them out at keepithumane.com forward slash podcast network. You can listen to all the animal control and animal welfare related podcasts there. And let's continue to help people help animals. Welcome to the Animal Control Report. This is the special edition Animal Control Officer Appreciation Week. We are here with Nick. Nick is call- calling. No, I guess you're not calling. This is live Zoom. Uh, appreciate you taking the time out for the upcoming ACO week to talk about yourself. Because honestly, here on the show, you know, we talk a lot with different people. We talk with ACOs. We talk with industry experts, etc. But really what I wanted to do for this week is give ACOs an opportunity to just talk a little bit about themselves. So, Nick, why don't you just get us started with a little of your background and how you became an ACO. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, number one. So um, I think it started when I started going to my local shelter in Rhode Island. Um, it started in about fifth grade. My mom and I would go and we would help clean cages and um, help clean the dog cages, enrich some of the cats, work with them a little bit, play with them. Um, I was still young, so we weren't really allowed to walk the dogs yet. Uh, I wasn't. So um, as I grew up, I was finally able to work with the dogs. And then in high school, I was able to help just train them. And that's where I fell into the world of animals. And, you know, I I grew up with animals. So um, that was fun. And then in high school, I actually had a, um, what's it called, a summer um, seasonal position with the environmental police's wildlife recovery team. And that job was very interesting because that was, um, under the environmental police. So people would call the environmental police and say, you know, we've got a, uh, sick wild animal, or we have a rabid raccoon or, or woodchuck or something. And so I would have to go out and, and contain those animals. And, and if they were injured, take them to a, a wildlife clinic there. So that really, sparked more interest in the animal field for me. So um, that was for a full summer, but it was a lot. You know, I had to go all around the state of Rhode Island to take care of these animals, which was pretty cool. Um, So after that, I started to focus on college, see where to go. Um, I went to my first college, got my uh, associates there, and then um, I started to probably do something in law enforcement. So I went to a school in Unity, Maine. Uh, I did conservation law enforcement there, wanted to be a fish and game warden. Um, Then that took some toll on me. And one of my professors was like, hey, Nick, since you like animals and you like law enforcement, why don't you just look at the animal control field? And I said, animal control. Ooh, okay. So I looked into it. I I researched it. I I, I called some folks up and they're like, yeah, you know, um, I never went on a ride along, but Mm -hmm. um, so in my hometown and the next town over, they're actually hiring. So I went to their interview, very interesting. Then I went to um, the interview here in Westport and um, that was about an hour from my house. So um, did the interview and then about a weekish later, they offered me the job. So That's solid. How long have you been doing it now? So I've been an ACO since the fall of tw- uh, 2019. Okay. Um, so I was hired in as the assistant. There was already um, a... F- we were both 30 hours a week. So the other officer okay. was 30 hours a week. I was 30 hours a week. So um, she would have the morning shift and then I would have the shift from one o'clock to 6 p.m. So, because we do get calls after, you know, normal business hours. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I was doing that for a couple of years and then um, the person left and then I was promoted to a full-time 40 hour week position. So I now do Mondays through Fridays and then I'm on call every other weekend. Okay. So that's how our department is run. Uh, we're under the Board of Health. Um, most agencies are either under their Board of Selectmen or their police department, but we're under the Board of Health. You'd you know? be surprised. And if you listen this week, it'll be fun to hear all the different places where people yeah. are actually are housed. In just my short career, I guess it's short, 15 years, 14 years. 
Um, yeah. Nonprofit, so Humane Society. Facilities was one of them. So like the mm. buildings, we were under the building people, which made no sense. Interesting. Interesting. And then I've been under public health and, and even uh, sheriff's office. So it, it's all over the place. And that's one of yeah. the... One of the, we'll, we'll save that for another time. So in your, I guess going on your fifth year, man, like yeah. what is, what's your favorite thing about the job? I think it's just the interaction with animals in the, in the um, residents here in town. I mean, okay. um, just helping people out with their dogs or um, just going to have a conversation about, you know, just for uh example today, I, I went out because there was a dog loose over the weekend. I went to their house um and said hey you know i don't want your dog hit you know it was in the road somebody brought it home for you sure um and we just had a good conversation you know you know what to do and and they were very appreciative of me um saying oh you know i'm not supposed to leave my dog out and let him roam around you know they're... it's cool when people see that we're actually right. compassionate about what right. we do and we're not coming at them with the dog catcher mentality right Right. And, and I have to say, um, since I took over and worked with all of these residents that I've been dealing with, um, I've seen a lot of that, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll never do that again. And, and they're very responsive and, and very eager to do what I've asked them to do. So, you know, I'd say, you know, your dog isn't licensed, I'm going to give you this amount of time to do it in. And if not, I, I have to give you a ticket. It's the law. You know, I, I try to work with these people. I don't, you know, slam tickets on people if I don't have to. I mean, if sure. they give me attitude, then I do that. I'm like, you know what? Here, here you go. I'm sorry, but you, I should stop saying sorry to them. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I've, I've heard, you know, a lot of good things um, by people from me saying, you know, I, I was good with them and everything. So um, let me ask you quickly, uh, mm -hmm. just because where you're located I feel like it's winter six months out of the year up there in Massachusetts. It's probably not. It probably isn't, but yeah, it's probably so, absolutely gorgeous. Do you get, are, do you deal with any marine wildlife since you're there? You have like a little port area. Coast so area. we've, we've got, um, we've got our three beaches, our town beaches, and then we've got two state beaches. Okay. So I get calls from the, um, from the Marine Mineral Rescue that um, someone has called that there's a breached seal, for example. Yes. Could you go out and, and, and take a look? So I go out and I'll take a photo of it and send it to them and say, hey, you know, this is what we got. And um, it doesn't appear to be injured. I got to do that, I think, two or three times last year, which was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we get that. And if it's on state property, I go, oh, you know, that state, you should call, you know, um, environmental police for that. Um, we had a large whale uh juvenile humpback whale wash up on our beach oh wow um i think it was last summer actually and that drew a lot of attention i mean everyone was there the news was there um it grew you know the crowds came environmental police came down um the Green Mail rescue too, came like, yeah do they do they did the whale do it on purpose right like not I mean, maybe it's sick or maybe. Well, I don't it know. was, it was, it was deceased. Oh, so, I see. So okay. it, it washed up on shore. Got it. Okay. And um, they had to drag it down to the beach. And then our highway department department ended up burying it very, very deep. I mean, we're talking 10 to 15 feet, wow. 30, 20 feet, as, as long as their back arm could yeah. reach down yeah. there. Cause you don't want it to come up during all the storms. Cause we do get a lot of storms here. And, um, yeah, it can come back up. Understood. So. What? Uh, any shout outs you want to give to other ACOs throughout the world, or any anything that like is just your impact moment that that you like when you're telling a story in ten years, like why you like where it clicked, where you were just like ACO work is is where I need to be. <clears throat> That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, you know. Educate, educate, educate. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, yeah. we are we are the eyes and ears of animals. And if someone is asking us to go do something in terms of, you know, I want to report if someone's reporting abuse, okay? It's our job to go out and investigate and, and see if there's actual abuse going on. And if there's not, then there's not. But just do your job, do your job well. And, and, you know, that's, I mean, it's pretty much all I got in terms of that. 
Well, and I, I share that same sentiment. You know, I, I think education is key. Yeah. When we, when we have, when, like when we have an opportunity to really help people help animals, and that's kind of been the slogan lately, it, it's really important. The people right. that, that may not be an ACO that are listening right now, like our job truly is to protect, care, and educate. And, and so it's like, if you take that enforcement approach where you're always just like, hey, put your dog on a leash or get in a ticket like that. That's not going to teach yes. anybody what the, right. what the truth is. And so right. I, uh, I applaud you. I thank you for, thank you for taking the time to, to do this. And as, as here on the ACO report, and then for me as well, just to be able to say like, thank you for being an animal control officer. I appreciate <laughs> all the hard work that you do. I've, you know, I may not um, be there with you specifically like on calls, but I'm there in spirit, man. And so, yeah. Another thing is, um, is, is get as much training as you can webinars, in-person trainings, because there's always something coming up. I mean, I do, not only do I do animal control webinars and trainings, but I also sometimes do police training sure. as well. Cause are your, is there any favorites that you do like online that our listeners can go check out? Like, so I, I, we're part of the Justice Justice Clearinghouse sure, and they've sure. got a lot of recorded webinars. So I've been watching those recorded webinars, but yeah. um, the two I focus on is of course, animal control department yeah. section. And then you've got the law enforcement section and there's actually quite a lot on there. You know, there's how to deal with um, aggressive people, um, uh, compassion fatigue, um, how to deal with sleep and, and stressful situations and, Sure. And um, so there's a lot that I was like, oh, wow. OK, you know, because, yeah. you know, we, we, we go into these stressful situations and um, sometimes, you know, police are there, too. So whatever police get trained in, I would like to be trained in as well, because like I just said, we go into these intense situations sometimes and we want to know how to alter our emotions and be the calming nature there and just say here's what's going to happen for sure i'll be in connecticut later this year doing some training so if you're able to come by it'd be nice to meet you in person man absolutely absolutely i'll, I'll send you the info as soon as we get it excellent okay. excellent thanks again for taking the time out to join you're us very on welcome the animal control report and thank happy you. animal control officer appreciation week you're very welcome and thank you very much again